so that we have enough time, we'll yep. be doing... Uh, we need plenty of room, I think, for, for Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Because you and I are going to have a bit of a scuff about well, it. I don't think so. Harry Potter I and the Goblin we of are. Fire. We're doing movie reviews. Mark's here. Ian in Manchester says, just returned home having seen Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, a five-star bumper film with superb effects. Even though it's two and a half hours long, it certainly didn't feel like it. A must, he puts in capital letters, to see for all Potter fans. And uh, this from Neil and Elaine on the M6. So Harry Potter at midnight. We loved it. Dark and scary. Ray finds is superb as Voldemort. Best one so far. This is what Mark thinks. Well, now, you know, of course, famously, the first two Harry Potter movies... Well, not that famously. I really didn't like the first two Harry Potter movies because they were directed by Chris Columbus, who I thought was an accountant, and, I, you know, they just had no magic for me. And I compared them very, very uh, badly to, for example, the Lord of the Rings movies, which genuinely had magic and danger and fantasy and darkness. Then an awful lot of ground was made up by Pr uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, which I thought was just a terrific film. It had a proper director. It had a proper filmmaking style. It was, it, it was something that really, really sucked you in. Now, I have to say that it is still my favourite Harry Potter movie because I think that, um, that that's... Prisoner of Azkaban is a very, very hard mark to match. However, the new Harry Potter movie, 12A certificate, because it contains, you know, dark, scary scenes, it contains dragons, it contains people hacking bits of themselves off in weird satanic rituals. I mean, it is, it, uh, as I think... Fun for all the fun family. Fun for all the family. I think Hank Lockton is leaving our dark and disturbing times lie ahead, which is a real sort of, come on, hey, how are you doing in your dark and disturbing times? Anyway, the beginning of the movie, our heroes are whisked off to the Quidditch World Cup, which I believe in the books, which, as you know, I have not read, but you have read the Quidditch World Cup. It's a huge thing. It takes up about a third of the book. Fine. In the film, it's over very, very quickly because about ten minutes into the film, bad things happen at the Quidditch World Cup. Ron! Harry! Come on, you're all right! Bring back to Harry. What if you conjured it? Crouch, you can't. I did not lie! You've been discovered at the scene of the crime! Crime? Barty, they're just kids. What crime? It's the dark mark, Harry. It's his mark. Voldemort? Those people tonight, in the masks, they're his too, aren't they? His followers. Death Eaters. Follow me. Um, there was a man. Before. Uh, there. All of you, this way! A man, Harry. Who? I don't know. I didn't see his face. Of course, the great thing about that clip is, as people will see, and it's not giving anything away, it says, that man, Harry, who? To which the answer is, yes, he's the new Doctor <laughs> Who. That's who David Tennant is. That's who they're talking about. That is precisely who it is. Yes, so who? who? The answer is yes. Yes, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking of that at the time. You're quite right. That is a joke that I should have laughed out loud at, but missed. So, that all turns out to be a preamble to the Goblet of Fire, in which Harry Potter goes back to Hogwarts School, and there is a Tri-Wizards tournament with the Goblet of Fire. I'm, this is terrible trying to condense the plot of this thing, honestly, but I, I think I'm doing as well as is, can be expected. They are meant to choose three champions, one from each school, but somehow Harry's name finds its way into the Goblet of Fire because, as seems to be the underlying theme in all of the Harry Potter stories, he is being drawn back toward a confrontation with Voldemort because he is the child who survived, and we know that the way it's all going. Fine, that's all you need to know about the plot. As far as the film itself is concerned, it's directed by Mike Newell, and Mike Newell is not somebody who's known best for fantasy, he's somebody who's known best for doing for, for, for drama, and an awful lot of this is dramatic interaction between the characters. It's, it requires acting, it requires dialogue, it requires, you know, the people to, to do thespian-like stuff, young as they may be, and actually I thought they all did pretty well. The most impressive thing about this movie for me, despite the fact that the narrative is is rambling. I mean, there is this whole kind of long section about the Quidditch World Cup at the beginning, and then and then it goes off at a, a, a totally other tangent. Is that I did feel that it had a brooding sense of menace by which I was impressed. There is a genuine sense of threat in it, a genuine sense of things darkening, a genuine sense of we are growing out of a state of innocence and we are growing into a state in which things bad things can happen. This is manifest in the last third of the movie by stuff which I think is scary. And in terms of the film's 12A certificate, for example, I would advise parents with kids under the age of 12 to think very seriously about taking their kids to see it. I'm not saying kids under the age of 12 shouldn't see it. What I'm saying, and I know I've said this before, is the 12A certificate requires you as the parent or guardian to, to think seriously about whether your child is up to this. And the fact is, there is really, really sort of... I mean, there is death. There is 
confrontation with really manifest physical evil. There is foreboding. Chopping there off is, of hands. There is chopping off of hands, which was something I was sort of dancing around then, but thank you for nailing it down to that's what it is. The special effects are terrific, particularly in the broomstick riding sequences. I mean, I was never convinced by the Quidditch matches in the year. I mean, when I first when I saw the first Harry Potter movie, the first thing you asked me was, how does the Quidditch match look? And I thought it looked ropey. I thought it looked, you know, silly and badly done superimposition. And I was very disappointed by it because having never read the book, I didn't have any sense of the magic of Quidditch. How, whatever the reason, they have now got to the point that the special effects are really, really well done. The dragons are incredibly well rendered. The, uh, the superimpositions and the flying sequences are done in a way so that when you have a dragon chasing Harry on a broomstick, even I, as a hardened fancy movie fan, think, you know, hey, that's a pretty good dragon chasing a boy on a broomstick. Somebody sent me an email saying, are they more convincing than those ropey dragons in Reign of Fire? Well, hey, I like Reign of Fire. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was a, uh, Reign of Fire was a perfectly decent I think they're about the same dragons, actually. They I mean, are pretty much, yeah, no, them. they are pretty much the same, but they are well done because they are actually fairly fearsome. And by the end of the movie, I did feel like I had gone through some stuff. If I have a reservation about the film, it is that it's not as narratively clear as it could be. And that is possibly because there's so much in the book that it's not really condensable. Now, well, you and I have had a conversation about this, and you have read the book. The book is huge. It's the biggest kid's book ever written, you know, in terms you mean of... the fattest? In, in terms of, yeah, in, yeah. Ter in terms of the number of pages. Right. And I thought there was an awful lot that was under-explained or just not explained at all. Yeah, and, but and that bothered you because you thought that, it, that it, it felt that it didn't make sense or because you felt there was stuff being left out of it? Well, I think, you know, the, the Quidditch world... Yeah, something had to go, but the yeah. Quidditch world comes such, such an important bit uh, in the book, and everyone's looking forward to it because that stadium where it's supposed to take place, you think, "Oh, this is going to be good," and then it's gone. Yes, uh, in about five seconds. But mainly, but mainly, I found it a bit hammy, and I don't think the children excelled themselves. Particularly, uh, is it Emma Watson who yes. plays Hermione? Who plays Hermione. Yeah, I thought she was uh, found wanting. Well, I have to really, say that I disagree. I disagree through. with you about that because I actually think that her performance is completely fitting for the character. One of the things about that character is that she's supposed to be awkward. She's supposed to be slightly priggish. She's supposed to be prickly and difficult. And actually, the the, the tendency would be to take all the all the rough edges off and make her into this, you know, glamorous figure over you know over whom they all swoon. Because one of the things that happens in the movie is that they discover the opposite sexes. There's a big ball in which they have to dance with, you know, with the boys have to dance with girls. And an awful lot of the movie is about exactly that, about them coming to terms with their, those teenage troubles. And I thought it was actually very well done, just how awkward and difficult she is. And I, I don't think that's a, a flaw in her acting. I think that's actually her very astutely portraying the character as a strange mix of awkward and difficult, and yet at the same time, insightful. Do you think Ron has, uh, has got Tourette's? Syndrome. Because well, it, I counted. I he, counted eleven. He's, he's swearing a yeah. lot, isn't he? Without saying the, you know, the, the B word. I counted eleven of the B words and, and, one, the P and word. one PO. Yes, exactly. And of course, apparently in the book, Ron does not do this, but in the movie, he, ha he clearly the very first thing Ron says is the thing that Ron says. And I have. It's a problem if you're a parent and you've got kids and you don't want the kids to uh, to pick up language. I mean, what, ha what happens in the book is it, it might say so and so swore heavily. Yes, which well, of course is you know you can get away with. But, but he's a great a actor. I think that kid he's is good. really, really good. In fact, of all the three of them, he is the one who I think is most obviously developing into a very fine actor. He's also in, in Thunderpants, which I like very much, and I think he's got a real career ahead of him. And the other, the other thing that I really, really wanted was more Alan Rickman, because yes. uh, he basically does nothing. In fact, but, he, he barely has a word to say. But one of the things about the Rickman character which is uh, strange is that up until now, the Rickman character has been quite comic. But as far as I understand it, again from those who have read the books, he is going to have to stop being comic in the next he's, movie. He's going to have to start being uh, anything but. So it might be quite well that in this film there is less of him doing the yes, Potter, you know, where are my detonators? Because he is basically doing Hans Gruber out of Die Hard. And Sheriff of Nottingham, I think he's still doing. Sheriff of yeah. Nottingham meets Hans Gruber out of Die Hard. There's also a very, very tiny amount of Jason Isaacs, whose role I like very much, but he's not, you know, he's only fleetingly in the film. But Dave, I, David Teddington, yes. by the way, would like to put the Harry Potter movies under the hmm. Okay. Catch our new hmm. Yeah, catch. but we're not saying hmm as bad. We're no. saying hmm as hmm. Could be. Yeah, it could go either way. So I was pleasantly surprised. I don't think it's up there with Prisoner of Azkaban, which I still think is the best of them. I think it's a really. I think. Well, I think you're absolutely right, and, and it is worth. I, mean, I think Ray Fiennes is clearly going to have a ball. He had a ball at the end of this as, as he turns up as he who must not be named. Yes. Oh, but Voldemort. That, uh, oh. Well, I'm sorry, but Harry can do it. Harry Potter can say Voldemort. How come I can't? It's a bit like Frau Blucher in uh, <laughs> Frankenstein.